So I was charged to talk about a uh, plan for efficient use of nitrogen fertilizer. Uh, well, so I would like to admit upfront that I do, do not have the magical plan, uh, but uh, with the next uh, 25 to 30 minutes, I would like to share some of my thoughts on the important elements that need to be included for an effective nitrogen management plan. Um, so when we think about efficient um, use of nitrogen, uh, those are probably the, uh, some of the general ideas come into our mind from the um, um, traditional farm trials, best management practices to emerging technologies, um, um, precision farming, uh, gene editing, etc. So indeed, those are the, um, the foundation of uh, efficient nitrogen management. Um, but the question is that, um, are those traditional uh, agronomic research and also the modern technological innovation sufficient for achieving efficient nitrogen management and addressing all those different nitrogen challenges? So, my, so I think the answer is no. And I would like to argue that a plan for efficient nitrogen use need to look beyond uh, the traditional agronomic research and technological innovation, and more specifically to consider the important social economic processes in addition to the uh, agronomic, uh, I mean, in addition to agronomic or ec ecological processes and to extend from uh, a focus of production on a single plot to the whole uh, or broad agri-food system. And the third, to engage stakeholders, uh, including farmers, but also um, many other stakeholders involved in the agri-food system and food supply chains, and consider the interconnections uh, across the boundaries of uh, sectors, uh, countries, and different disciplines. So why we should expand the scope of nitrogen management, um, uh, especially in those three uh, directions? Um, so I just want to make sure that, could you see the top of the slide well? Because I have a kind of a band of the yeah, operating. Yes, it's okay. We, we okay. see the, the titles extend from uh, production focused. Yeah, it's okay. Okay, yeah, thank we you. Should do your mouse. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I think part of the reason is that um, so there are, uh, there are those three major elements are the keys for understanding and addressing those uh, three major paradox in the current nitrogen management. Um, so the first paradox, um, I call it high tech low efficiency paradox. And here's what I mean. So with all the fast evolving modern technologies um, and many technologies and management practices, such as uh, um, 4 uh, genetic improvement, they can significantly improve the efficiency of nitrogen uptake by crop plants. And those technologies and management practices have become more available and affordable around the world. So have we seen a cross-board improvement in the nitrogen use efficiency? And the answer is no. And this figure shows the uh, historical trajectory of nitrogen use efficiency uh, for countries around the world and also globally. Um, so the, yeah, just to help you to orient this figure a little bit. So the, the two axes, uh, the, the Y axis and uh, X axis are showing the two major efficiency terms in crop production. The X axis is yield, um, which is a measure of land use efficiency, and the y-axis is the nitrogen use efficiency. And this gray color scale shows the nitrogen surplus, which is the indication of uh, potential nitrogen loss to the environment. Um, and then those different colored lines shows the 50-year trajectory for uh, countries around the world. As you can see, all of the countries has been moving to the right, um, seeking for higher yield. And most of the country has been moving downwards, especially at the early intensification stage. Um, and some country, um, only a few such as uh, U US and France 
has shown this uh, increase in nitrogen use efficiency in recent decades. But even with the increasing in nitrogen use efficiency in the US, you do not necessarily see uh, improvement in or reduction in nitrogen surplus as is kind of following this line, um, uh, like along this gray color shade. Um, so with all those amazing progress in crop and fertilizer technologies, um, why we haven't seen a worldwide increase in nitrogen use efficiency yet? And what are the reasons behind this apparent paradox? Um, so we need to be realistic here. So when farmers decide on what to plant or what, uh, how to plant, they are not only considered how efficient a crop uh, or a technology is, the decision is largely affected by, on one hand, what are the climate and soil conditions um, for the farm? And on the other hand, what are the market and the policy environment at the moment? And this is a highly complex uh, decision-making process with lots of psychological and social factors playing critical roles. And we need to get better at understanding those social, economic, and ecological processes in a more integrated manner. So the second paradox um, in nitrogen management is about too much and too little. Um, and here's what I mean. Uh, while we are adding, um, or while we are having a problem of too much nutrient uh, added to the environment, we also have a problem of too little nutrient left on the plate. Um, currently, we are adding about uh, 190 tyrogram of nitrogen for agriculture production annually, but only 30 tyrogram uh, was actually consumed by uh, human as a food products, uh, resulting in an efficiency of nitrogen use of only uh, 16%. Uh, however, even with this 30 tyrogram of nitrogen in the food products, it is sufficient to feed the world population with a basic protein demand. But due to the unequal distribution of food availability across income levels and across countries, we're also leaving too little on the plate for those people who need them the most. So in comparison to this 16% uh, nitrogen use efficiency for the whole agri-food system, the nitrogen use efficiency for the cropping system is about um, 43%. So this large gap between 43 to 16 also demonstrates a huge loss of nit uh, huge loss of efficiency uh, beyond crop farms. So another um, paradox for this too much and too little uh, is also evident uh, across the world region. And this is a global map of fertilizer inputs uh, around the world produced at my lab. Uh, well, there are uh, intensive nitrogen inputs in China, India, uh, Corn Belt, US. Um, nitrogen input into the African continents remain very low. And what are the consequences of such uneven uh, distribution of nitrogen input? So I believe you see this figure from uh, Luis earlier uh, talk, but just briefly, those figures shows the yield response to the nitrogen input for uh, major world regions in the past 50 years. So the x-axis is nitrogen input, y-axis is yield. Each circle shows the one year record with the blue colored uh, circle shows the more recent years. So with the very low nitrogen inputs in sub saharan Africa, um, it corresponds to the very low yield. It's less than one fifth of the yield level in China or US, uh, providing very limited nutrition to support the local population. And the, also the very low nitrogen inputs also expose the soil to the risk of nitrogen depletion and degrades the soil health. So therefore, it is critical to extend the focus of the improving nitrogen use efficiency on a single plot to the broad agri-food system and also to uh, national to global scales. So uh, the third paradox, I call it high productivity and low nutrition. So without a question, agricultural productivity has been increasing over the past five decades. 
despite which indicators that you looked at. So as a result, are we feeding the population better? Maybe not. So this figure shows the historical trends of food insecurity index um, and uh, the prevalence of undernourishment. So those indicators shows that the percentage of population with increased uh, insecure food uh, supply is actually increasing in recent years despite the continuous increase of um, uh, agricultural productivity. Meanwhile, the nitrogen surplus, the measure of um, a nitrogen uh, pollution stress uh, is also increasing um, along with the uh, increasing uh, productivity. So a more productive agriculture does not necessarily mean a more sustainable agriculture. And it's critical to monitor and improve the impact of agricultural production on environment, social, and economic dimension of sustainability. And in order to achieve that, the collaborations across the boundaries of disciplines, sectors, and nation are very much necessary. Um, so neither too much or too little of nitrogen is desirable, and we are having several paradoxical issues associated with the current nitrogen management. So how could we get it right? So one strategy has been uh, discussed often is improving nitrogen use efficiency. So the idea is that if we can remove all the nitrogen that we added to the ecosystem as a food products, then we can meet the food demands without polluting the environment. Therefore, uh, it's uh, quite important to understand how the nitrogen use efficiency is defined, how it has been changing, and what are the drivers and how we can improve it. And those are the major questions that has been investigated in my uh, research team. Um, so I know that the nitrogen use efficiency has uh, came up uh, several times in the previous uh, talk, but I uh, just want to um, make, a, uh, make a brief uh, overview of the definition. Um, so what is nitrogen use efficiency? So it means for a defined system, we can account for the nitrogen quantities that come into the system and leaving the system. Um, so this approach is also called nitrogen budget or nutrient budget. And based on the budget, the nitrogen use efficiency could be defined as uh, how, um, the productive output divided by the to uh, total input. And the nitrogen surplus is usually defined by the difference between those two terms as an in indication of the potential nitrogen loss to the environment. So this approach has been widely applied so far. Um, and through a systematic review um, for the existing literature, we identified a range of systems that those uh, um, nitrogen uh, use efficiency has been quantified for um, from the soil plant system all the way to the ecosystem, uh, landscape ecosystem. So the, the approach has also been applied across multiple spatial scales from a single farm to the globe. So focus on the nitrogen use efficiency for the crop system for a moment, which is a soil plant system. So nitrogen enter into the system through fertilizer, manure application, biological nitrogen fixation and depletion. Um, part of it will be harvested as crop products some will be storage in the soil, and much of the input, more than 50%, will be lost to the environment. Um, consequently, the nitrogen use efficiency is defined as harvested nitrogen divided by this total nitrogen input. Again, the surplus is defined by the difference between those two. Um, so how the nitrogen use efficiency for the cropping system has been changing. So I have already shown you this figure, so I won't uh, repeat uh, the, the description for this. Um, and, but based on this kind of historical records of nitrogen use efficiency for countries around the world for the past 50 years, we also examine the drivers for the um, nitrogen use efficiency um, um, using both um, statistical and uh, theoretical modeling approach. Um, and through uh, those efforts, we have identified 
multiple drivers, and I would use my time to just focus on the three major drivers uh, from the social economic perspective. Um, so the first one is the role of fertilizer to crop price ratio. So lots of you might already become familiar with this uh, figure on the left. So it is, it is a typical yield response function. It shows that for a given farm under the same management practices and technology, as you adding more nitrogen fertilizer, the yield increase will tend to levels off. That's because the other limiting factors will become more important. Uh, consequently, the nitrogen use efficiency shown on, uh, in this right figure uh, will decline as a um, consequence. So the level of the uh, nitrogen fertilizer application rate is determined by the social economic factors such as the market price of fertilizer and crops, as well as farmers' perceptions on risk. So the takeaway from this slide is that um, for a given technology, nitrogen use efficiency is not the constant number. Um, depending on the uh, fertilizer and crop price, uh, fertilizer application rate could be quite different. And consequently, the, the nitrogen use efficiency uh, can change largely as well. And the second um, point I want to make is that the more advanced technology does not necessarily lead to the increase in nitrogen use efficiency or reduction in nitrogen surplus. Um, and the type of technology being implemented and how it's being implemented really matter. And here is the abstract um, uh, illustrate. Uh, yeah, this is an abstract illustration of uh, this, um, this point. So the bl black line uh, shows a baseline yield response function and overall, the technology can shift this yield response function in three different ways. This red technology, for example, some precision farming approach can reach the same yield ceiling at a much lower nitrogen input level. Um, and the second type of technology, the blue one, uh, some example could be control release fertilizer, can reach a higher yield uh, with same or lower nitrogen input. The third type of technology um, uh, example could be improved cultivars. It can reach a much higher yield level, but also require much um, higher nitrogen input. So all those three technology, all those three type of technologies are considered as more advanced or more efficient because they can all reach the previous yield ceiling with a much less nitrogen input. But in practice, if farmer operate to maximize their profit, the nitrogen, the fertilization rate and nitrogen use efficiency will be very different from where you see at the triangle. Just take the pink technology as example. Um, the most profitable nitrogen application rate for the pink technology is uh, noted with this uh, uh, pink circle. Uh, and instead of um, reducing nitrogen input rate, um, implementing pink technology will actually lead to the increase of the nitrogen fertilizer input. And such an input may also result in additional nitrogen loss to the environment and decrease or stagnant nitrogen use efficiency. So the takeaway here is that not all the technologies and management practices lead to the improvement of nitrogen use efficiency uh, along with yield. And it's really important to identify and promote those technologies that can achieve the win-win for both yield and environmental targets. Um, so the third um, drivers that I want to briefly mention is this crop mix. Um, and uh, this, uh, so this figure on the uh, bottom right shows a summaries of uh, nitrogen use efficiency for crop types for countries around the world. Um, so, so the so the um, the black the black diamond shows a global average uh, um, nitrogen use efficiency value for each of the crop type, uh, and the, the gray bar shows the variations across different countries. Um, and those two type of circles are coming from uh, one is for China and the other is accounting for the import for China. Um, so just focus on the global value. You can see that um, 
the nitrogen use deficiency for fruit and vegetables um, and also the sugar crops are much lower than the other crop types. Meanwhile, uh, <coughs> soybeans are <coughs> appear to be um, uh, at a higher level than the um, cereal crops. <coughs> Therefore, by shifting the crop production portfolio of a country, uh, the nitrogen use deficiency can also change largely. So uh, yeah, we have discussed a lot about the, the potential drivers of nitrogen use deficiency uh, in cropping system. Um, so how much improvement is needed in order to meet the food demands in 2050? while bringing the human disturbance to nitrogen cycle back to the uh, planetary boundary. And there are many goals out there and I picked the two um, uh, widely used one, just gave you a reference of wh which direction that we need to go. Um, so this um, green area uh, sh sort of <laughs> noted with the green color uh, is uh, the, the area that we want to be in order to provide sufficient food production with uh, um, uh, relatively low nitrogen emission. So that would mean that globally, the nitrogen use efficiency need to increase from the current uh, 43 or 45% to about 70%. And it means different challenges for different um, part of the world. So, um, in order to achieve this uh, in, increase or improvement in the nitrogen uh, use efficiency, we certainly need to uh, um, look for the um, solutions from the technology and management practices, but uh, we also need to go beyond that and consider the, um, the improvement of the fair, uh, market policy conditions to incentivize the implementation of those technologies. And some consideration in, um, could be also given to uh, the potential shifts in the crop production portfolio. Um, so besides those efforts in improving nitrogen use efficiency uh, for individual countries, another opportunity has been uh, proposed to improve the uh, worldwide nitrogen use efficiency, namely by reallocating nitrogen and food production around the world regions considering their um, very different yield response to nitrogen input. So this is a simplified illustration of such opportunity. So the x-axis is nitrogen input and the y-axis is yield. And those two different color lines shows two uh, typical yield response function. So different region locates at different parts of the, uh, this figure. Um, so as you can observe here, by adding the same amount of nitrogen, um, the yield response or the yield increase could be quite different among uh, different regions. Therefore, we can potentially achieve the same uh, food production goal by optimizing and reallocating the nitrogen resources to the region that can benefit the most from it. So it may not seem um, realistic, to convince Chinese farmers to apply less and allocate the, uh, that uh, saved amount to the Africa um, nations. Um, however, such a reallocation has already uh, been facilitated by the international trade network. Um, and, um, and with uh, the paper that uh, Luis, and, uh, uh, Luis mentioned earlier, that it also demonstrates a, a large um, um, potentials in reducing the nitrogen surplus uh, and improving nitrogen use efficiency on the global scale. Uh, but we also need to uh, recognize that by reallocating the production uh, and the nitrogen inputs, it is also accompanied with many unintended consequences, such as the deforestation in Brazil and also uh, the systematic risk in the food supply. So it's very critical to have a comprehensive assessment uh, to monitor the impact of nitrogen management practices and international trade on the three pillars of sustainability, considering environment, social, and economic. Um, so, so just um, in response to this uh, need, uh, uh, we have coordinated a transdisciplinary and transnational team um, in, over the past uh, four years 
and developed uh, sustainable agriculture metrics, which in, including uh, 18 indicators to monitor the performance of agriculture production in over 150 countries for the past four, uh, five decades. Um, so one of the indicator uh, is developed based on the nitrogen uh, surplus, which is the indication of environmental stress added by the in, uh, agricultural production. So, um, so with the sustainable agriculture matrix, we can provide a re report card for uh, each country and the overview of agriculture um, sustainability for countries around the world. I won't go into details with this, um, but um, just briefly utilizing those data uh, and the historical trajectory of those indicators, we can also investigate the trade-offs or synergies between the nitrogen pollution stress indicator and other agricultural sustainability indicators. Uh, and here is um, a, a summary of the results. So um, we define the synergies here as a um, um, uh, significantly positive relationship between the two indicators. So that means the two indicators has been moving towards sustainability uh, altogether or moving away from sustainability targets altogether. And then the trade-off uh, noted with the blue color um, is, um, not, is defined as uh, um, um, the, the two indicators are uh, going the opposite directions. Um, so, so for this, so this is a quite complicated figure, uh, but I just want to uh, briefly walk you through. So the diagonal uh, are are the all the eighteen lead, uh, eighteen indicators, and uh, um, so each each of the box shows the um, the fraction of the countries in trade off or synergy relationship for the specific pair of the in indicator. So just to <clears throat> use the nitrogen surplus and undernourishment as an example, as you can see this, fig, uh, this box, um, it's, so it shows that, um, so the, um, yeah, so the blue, blue color shows the, uh, the fraction of countries that uh, has demonstrated the trade-off relationship between those two indicators and uh, the orange shows the synergetic relationship. Uh, so you can see that only a small fraction of countries denoted by this um, orange color shows the synergy between the reducing uh, nitrogen pollution and undernutriment rate. Well, some countries shown by this uh, blue colors um, have uh, shown trade-offs. That means that while the large fraction of nitrogen, uh, 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 while uh, those countries has been uh, um, improving on the, um, the undernutriment uh, performance, the, the nitrogen surplus or nitrogen pollution is actually getting worse. Um, so, so we can look into uh, also looking to the countries um, that, that has shown the different uh, synergetic or trade-off relationship to seek for experience or licenses for, the, uh, for the, their policy implementation or policy design and uh, technology implementation. So besides those statistical approach, we also utilize those data to uh, assess the, uh, the impact of trade on um, environmental sustainability. And this is uh, just the example that we did um, with uh, uh, the indicator that I showed earlier in the SAM uh, framework. Um, so, so far, uh, we have focused on the nitrogen use efficiency discussion on the crop production, but it accounts for only um, uh, most of the, um, so because it accounts for most of the nitri reactive nitrogen added to the earth system and the large fraction of nutrient loss to the environment. However, improving nitrogen use efficiency for crop production alone is not sufficient in addressing the nitrogen management challenge. So globally, when we move from the um, cropping system to agriculture system, NUE dropped to uh, 22%. And this job could be attributed to the low efficiency in livestock, lack of recycling of uh, manures, uh, et cetera. And as we move further to the agri-food system, by including the food supplies, um, the nitrogen use efficiency dropped further to the 16%. 
And this job could be attributed to the uh, food waste and directory patterns, et cetera. So this figure further illustrates the addressing the nitrogen challenge, which requires systematic uh, changes beyond crop farm and throughout the food system. So consequently, it's imperative to develop a nitrogen management framework that encompassing the complex nitrogen dynamics across the system and spatial scales, yet could be simple enough to guide policies and actions of various stakeholders. So I just um, uh, quickly, um, as a first attempt to address this need, we propose a new framework called CAFE uh, that connects the four nitrogen management system in a hierarchical manner. The figure on the uh, right shows the more detailed de definition of each system, and figure on the left shows the uh, initial uh, application to countries around the world. So just take China as an example, the top of the each color bar is determined by the nitrogen surplus for each of the system. As you can see, as you're moving from the cropping system to uh, animal system, food system, and ecosystem, um, the nitrogen surplus increase. And the level of increase noted by the, the uh, length of the color bar indicate the priority for intervention. So we are also currently developing uh, initial um, suggestions for policy interventions for each of the uh, management gap areas, uh, and also co-developing this framework with uh, different stakeholders. Uh, and I currently have one pro co-development projects in the Chesapeake Bay area to apply this um, uh, framework and um, develop tools to inform uh, nitrogen management on and beyond farm. Um, so as a summary, I would like to argue that the efficient nitrogen management plan need to expand the scope of nitrogen management in those directions uh, because they are necessary to address those um, major paradox in nitrogen management. Um, and uh, just briefly on the nitrogen use efficiency, the higher efficiency is de desirable, um, uh, but the crop nitrogen use efficiency has been declining uh, and stagnant globally. And it need to increase to over 70% to meet the food and environment targets. And the improvement require not only the technological advancement, but also the changes in the social economic conditions. Um, and there are also complex trade-offs between the improving nitrogen management and other social uh, sustainable agriculture goals. Um, and uh, we also need to be careful or need to be aware of the opportunities for nitrogen management beyond farm. So with that, I would like to thank all the collaborators and funding support and thank you for stay with me for the past uh, 30 minutes. Thank you, that's it. Thank you, Green, for this uh, very impressive uh, um, presentation. Um, I will now uh, give the floor to Patrice Dumas for five minutes presentation. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you, Shin. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you for your presentation. It was very insightful and uh, it, it opens a lot of, uh, of uh, discussion and of uh, of options that can be looked at to 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 view the issue of nitrogen uh, more uh, in in a more system systemic way. So I think that that's very interesting. Uh, I have uh, three three questions uh, that um, I would like to uh, to have your. Uh, your advice on uh, the, the first one is on the, um, the, the the target for the nitrogen um, use efficiency. Um, it seems to me that uh, and, and you 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 discuss that a lot in your presentation about the socioeconomic uh, uh, what 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 are the, the socioeconomic context behind NUE. It seems to me that um, the at the world level and uh, definitely in the OECD country in China, in India, there, there has been a lot of historically, the, 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 the public policies have uh, tended to, to increase a lot uh, oversupply of uh, nitrogen. Such that uh, to me, part of the, of the, 
uh, of the increase of nitrogen use efficiency that you in the in the US in the in France for instance and I think China will follow uh, also that uh, that uh, that way now that the the, the, the subsidies have been uh, cut. Uh, so, so a lot of, of um, improvement of nitrogen use efficiency comes from uh, the reduction of, uh, of, the, of those policies that led to oversupply. But it's not very clear to me uh, to what extent uh, bearing those, uh, those, those um, public policies, it's really possible to increase uh, nitrogen use efficiency without uh, decreasing the yields. So it's not very clear to me if that uh, if the target you propose is really um, uh, reasonable, uh, given that uh, most of the the the, the the progress has been because uh, the, the world were, were, was very, very inefficient, uh, especially uh, the, 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 the country with the most, uh, with, with the highest yield. So that would be one, one question. Uh, I have a second question on, uh, on the, uh, the idea to, to increase the scope uh, of the nitrogen efficiency. I think it's, uh, it's very interesting. Uh, uh, it made me think about the role of livestock. Uh, it, it seems, according to the number you show, uh, livestock is a big uh, reason why the nitrogen efficiency uh, drops when you go from the uh, crop to the, um, the, the whole agricultural uh, system. It seemed to me that in the past, uh, livestock, and especially ruminant livestock, was used to get nitrogen from uh, pastures and uh, bring it uh, to the to, to, to cropland, and uh, it seems to now it's it's going in the other direction. Uh, livestock decrease the the, the nitrogen uh, efficiency instead of uh, adding uh, of adding to it, and it also relates to the to, to, to what Luis uh, uh, showed that. Uh, a lot of uh, nitrogen in manure actually comes from uh, uh, synthetic nit nitrogen. Uh, you, you didn't really uh, uh, discuss that option. You said uh, manure should be uh, uh, used more efficiently. I think that uh, trying to have some way to reconnect uh, uh, livestock uh, and uh, livestock farming and um, and uh, cropland farming uh, with, with uh, tr trying to have more transfer in the direction from livestock to, to crop could be also interesting, but it probably has some, some consequences on the system. And my last uh, question is- Maybe, Patrice, uh, do you want me to just uh, quickly respond to the yes, first yes, two? Yes. Because I, 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 <laughs> I'm a little bit worried that I'm gonna lose my- uh, um, yeah, response. Uh, or yes, thinking. yes. Also, because it, it's quite it's quite independent the last <laughs> one anyway. So, and maybe uh, I, I could also uh, ask it after some uh, some other discussion from other people. Yeah, no problem. I think those are the two very uh, great points. Uh, let me just start from the second point about the the um, uh, the systematic thinking about nitrogen management uh, and also the coupling between the uh, crop nitrogen uh, crop production and the livestock production. I think you gave a very interesting example for the, say the, the, the livestock was, or the kind of cattle was used to kind of use as a way to extract nitrogen uh, from the pastures and feed the people. Uh, I think um, it's, uh, so there's two ways to think, uh, to look at it. So the, for that, um, but for that traditional uh, kind of pasture-based uh, livestock production, um, the, the efficiency of nitrogen use for the animal or the livestock itself uh, is probably similar to what we have in the uh, uh, concentrated, uh, 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 concentrated animal uh, facility like CAFO, um, which is uh, quite 
quite low, probably five uh, percent ish. But the good thing about the pasture based is that it has a di direct recycling between the like what's being taken up by the uh, cattle and then the, the manure is even though it is still a large amount of uh, nitrogen input is excreted, but it's come back to the field and the come back uh, and then it's uh, have this cycle. So if you just uh, if you cap or define your system as this um, pasture and the livestock um, system, then it's a quite it could be considered as quite efficient system. But if you just look at the, the animal itself, then it's rather um, um, inefficient. So that's the issue about the current in the like concentrated animal um, man management facility that you separate the um, um, the uh, the livestock or animal product um, production from the uh, the crop crop productions or the feed productions, and then it's very hard uh, to recycle those um, manures back to the the cropland. So. Um, so uh, yeah, not so. Uh, so if we were able to uh, say, based uh, with all the technological advancements of manure treatment or uh, um, um, manure recycling, if we were able to reconnect this um, this cycle, then that that would become uh, yeah, that that would be ideal. Um, but the the challenge is that as we are kind of further concentrate the production in one space, the surrounding area that used for crop production become very little. So if you, you can do a simple calculation in terms of uh, how much um, crop, I mean, how much crop plants or how, how far you need to tr uh, transport the, the, the generated manure uh, back to the, the crop plant. Um, so this kind of uh, spatial, this, uh, this connection also leads to this um, this issue of a uh, large drop of nitrogen use efficiency coming from the cropping system to the animal crop system. Um, yeah, I hope that can um, um, address some of the <laughs> points that you raised. And then for the first one uh, about the targets for the nitrogen use efficiency, um, I think so from my point of view, it's really a, um, yeah, it's really a question of which stakeholder that you're um, um, talking about, or like, um, what what are the so how so what what is the motivation for setting that targets? So uh, if the um, so so I think that the targets that I discussed in my slides was based on kind of meeting the uh, the twenty fifty food production targets while bringing the kind of nitrogen pollution level back to the planetary boundary. So that is more of a kind of top-down uh, uh, approach to define this uh, targets. And then uh, there's another way to, uh, to, to discuss or think about the targets coming from say on a given farm or given field, what is achievable for the nitrogen use efficiency. Um, and, um, and I think that's, um, so I think the goal is trying to bring the, this, uh, this top-down one and the, 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 the field-based nitrogen use efficiency targets together. Um, and uh, I, I still want to maybe add one more point there because um, I hear lots of arguments that, okay, based on this, um, yeah, based on this uh, soil condition and based on uh, the current, um, climate condition, the nitrogen use efficiency cannot go above certain level, like cannot reach the 70%. Um, I would argue it's not necessarily, the, uh, it's not necessarily true. Like if you recall the figure I shows in my, uh, one of my talk, um, the, the nitrogen use efficiency for a given farm and given technology is rather dynamic. Um, like when you, uh, for a given farm, uh, when you apply very little nitrogen, you, you, you would have little yield, but also your nitrogen use efficiency is likely also uh, quite high. Um, it's not ideal because it doesn't reach the yield targets, but the arguments will be, yeah, 
what's your management targets, whether it's meeting the production level or whether it's meeting the efficiency or environmental targets. So I think there, there are lots of uh, uh, discussions need to happen in order to kind of set a reasonable goal. Um, and uh, um, yeah, I think that's kind of my thoughts <laughs> on the top of my head. I hope that addressed some, at least part of your questions. Thanks, Lin. Uh, so we have three other questions in the chat. Um, I can read it. Uh, uh, if you don't mind, I will read it, uh, the, the three questions at the same time, so uh, because we are running a, running a little late. Uh, so we have a first question from Caroline Dalin. Um, uh, is there any regions or community uh, that has considered controlling either uh, any anyway, uh, nitrogen use efficiency or N surplus, where it is very high on farms? And uh, if so, um, how would be uh, evaluated? Um, because uh, is, is yield over uh, nitrogen use uh, precise enough? Okay, so that's the first question from Karin. So maybe I can let you answer this question. Mm. Controlling, so I assume that so I think like uh, in the US, uh, uh, there, there has been some push in, in terms of using the nitrogen surplus as one of the indicators to measure the, the performance of the uh, farm uh, level nitrogen management. Um, but there's no kind of uh, hardline regulations on that. Uh, um, and uh, I think, yeah, the, the nitrogen use efficiency will be another, uh, it, uh, yeah, another indicator that could be considered. But I think it's also that when we move on to the farm, um, um, yeah, we'll move on to the discussion on farm, we need to be careful and uh, discuss uh, uh, or need to be careful in terms of setting the targets. So the nitrogen use efficiency targets need to be set in the context of uh, the nitrogen yield targets. Um, so be, yeah, because that's th those two are interconnected, and uh, you don't want to achieve a, a high efficiency but a low yield, right? Um, so, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, so we have uh, also a question about the worldwide organization of uh, nitrogen efficiency that you propose. Uh, are there opportunities for reorganization at a more regional level? For example, at the level of continent zone like EU, and also a question from Daniel: uh, We usually separate N nitrogen from phosphorus, but uh, uh, so uh, Daniel says that he would guess that uh, NU and N surplus depend on P uh, on phosphorus and generally. So maybe uh, it can be uh, an issue. Uh, and we have a last question from Nicola. Uh, considering we can decrease uh, nitrate leaching after harvest with co cover crops, do we really need to increase NU up to 70%? What do you think about the cover crops lever? Uh, what it, would it be an important lever? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so for the, for the last question about uh, like when you have a cover crop to reduce the nitrate leaching, then uh, whether it's necessary to uh, uh, increase NUE up to 70%. I, I think, again, it's come back to the, um, probably the earlier discussion in response to Patrice's uh, comments. Uh, it's, uh, um, it's so, it's, yeah, it it's really depends on your management targets. So nitrogen leaching, nitrate leaching is only one of the environmental impact of nitrogen uh, surplus or nitrogen loss to the environment. So the other is, uh, the N2O emission um, or ammonia emissions. So uh, if those are not the limiting factor, yes. So if you have a cover crop capture the nitrate, then maybe you can argue to have your uh, uh, NUE slightly lower than uh, 70%. But another thing would be the, the use of fertilizer. So fertilizer production itself is an energy intensive product. So you really don't, don't want to waste it too much. Um, so the, the, yeah, the study about the nitrogen and phosphorus, um, 
Yeah, so actually my, my research, um, one of my graduate students is doing the uh, analysis on phosphorus and I may have more to discuss with you later. I, I know that we are running short on time, so, but, but feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I'd be happy to talk to you about more about the, the story uh, between nitrogen and phosphorus. Um, yeah. Uh, Sorry, I think uh, Patrice also have a, a last point. I, I apologize for cutting you off and I apologize for my long answers. <laughs> well, uh, I had, uh, uh, sorry, uh, yes, uh, I, I, my, my last point was on the matrices um, and it, it was not, so, so it, it seems to be something uh, quite interesting and that I've not seen uh, often that kind of, uh, of analysis, but it's not very clear to me uh, if you can uh, use that kind of uh, analysis uh, by itself, or if you if, if you need to go back to the processes that are behind the number you show to to the number I would say the uh, the different um, uh, link between yeah. the different uh, indicators. Um, if you, if you, uh, it's not clear to me that you can uh, distinguish whether you are looking at correlation or if you are looking really at something that is really interesting in terms of lever, for instance, without uh, going back to the, the, the causes that underlie the different uh, link between the indicators. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I, I, and Niklas, a short, short question, please, and a short answer from Zin, because we, we are running late. We have just one minute for, for finishing the discussion. Okay. Thanks a lot for the opportunity. So I really enjoyed your talk, and I, I see a lot of similarities to the pesticide question. And uh, one aspect I was missing a bit is uh, behavior, actually, of the decision maker. You were talking about socioeconomic systems. But if we talk about inefficiency, of course, a major driver would also be inefficient behavior of a decision maker, right? So is this something you're considering in your models, in your analysis also? Yeah, the, the short answer is that we are uh, currently uh, co-developing this uh, framework or application of this uh, CAFE framework with uh, different stakeholders, uh, because uh, coming from the academic uh, background. Uh, we know that we have our limitations in uh, thinking about the issues uh, uh, from a kind of policymaker or a more practical point of view. So we're having a stakeholder advisory group that working with me um, and the group to develop the, app, the, the, the framework and also the application of framework, um, specifically with an example in the Chesapeake Bay. Um, yeah. And also have several country groups that working on this sustainable agriculture matrix application in different country contexts. 